There's a pretty one, Ulysses. Hello, hello, hello. My name is Sean. I'm the Book Mania. Welcome back to my channel. And here I am with another Friday Reads. Had a busy day, so getting started filming a little later than usual. Might try to be a little bit briefer than usual, but that doesn't usually pan out very well. I have one bail to tell you about. It's also one of the two books that I started. My experience of this short story collection, Get in Trouble by Kelly Link, bore out the predictions by Heidi of My Reading Life and at least one other subscriber that I wasn't gonna take to it. I didn't take to it. I got halfway through the first story. I didn't ever really like the writing, but there was a bit of liveliness, energy to the story about a young woman with a cold and her high school friend who was a lesbian and a guilt-ridden, born-again Christian father. I wasn't ever really beguiled by any of that but then halfway through the story the sick protagonist sends her lesbian friend up the hill with some mysterious instructions and the friend goes to a house that's full of magic and sticks a note under the door and all kinds of magical things appear to be being about to ensue and I said no <laughs> not for me Half of one story was more than enough. So that was an ill-fated abortion of a buddy read with Joe Smith, and we have decided to give up while we're ahead. We're not going to try to buddy read another short story collection. We probably would have continued, but she's on a bit of a book buying ban. Just, we'll try again later. So that happened. Uh, much more successfully, I have started, but haven't made a whole bunch of progress. I've only read about 26 pages of... Nancy Mitford's The Pursuit of Love. This was highly recommended to me by Leah. I'm enjoying it very much, the first 26 pages. I have never gotten really excited about the Mitford sisters. I've read about them. They were an illustrious family. Apparently, Nancy Mitford was a pretty good writer. Based on 26 pages, I think so too. I hope to finish more, but I did finish the two tomes that I took on this month. First of all, Norman Collins' 1945 novel, London Belongs to Me. This was a buddy read with Amy of Zoe Beck. Great buddy read. And a really good book. It ended up being a four-star read for me, not a five. So, as usual, when it's a four-star read, I have more complaints than I do <laughs> things to praise. Extremely well-drawn characters. A page-turner. And, by the end... I. I felt like I had been wanting more that wasn't satisfied. But boy, Collins creates very memorable characters. And the way that he makes the humor so believable, with one character in particular, but not only him, there are so many accidents and near accidents that happen in the novel that are hilarious that as I was reading I was thinking now is this a bit overdone and thinking no well that something like that happened to me last week and oh something like that happened to me last year like it just very believable but kind of madcap almost like a realistic version of the three stooges I don't know but I really enjoyed the humor and I have to say that the humor prevented me from loving the characters like it kept me a bit at a distance i also thought that collins could have done more with the story because it's set in the months leading up to the outbreak of world war ii and then covers part of the first year lots of date references in the novel and i felt myself checking it again so well, when did the blitz begin and this and that and i felt like there was more that could have been mined while still keeping the humor and the extremely well-drawn characters with all their foibles, more could have been said about everyday people caught up in all their dramas and then war breaks out. And I just felt like more there was more that could have been explored that wasn't. I really enjoyed it. With that proviso, I recommend it uh, very highly. Part of why it was obvious to me that that was only a four-star read and not a five was that I was reading it alongside Kate Atkinson's A God in Ruins. This was a buddy read with Lindy, and we loved it. I loved it so much that I was kind of tongue-tied from beginning to end. It really held up against Life and Life. I think I had a lot to say about Life and Life, but it didn't 
it didn't explore the the whole thing about being re- dying and being reborn. It wasn't quite reincarnation, but kind of like that in Life After Life. But it did explore the lives of some of the same characters in that family, especially the protagonist, Ted. And I just adored it. But I never really had much to say about it. I could appreciate the differences in style and literary technique that were happening here. The most I had to say was about the relationship between the characters and how I felt about the characters. But there is a lot going on in here that Lindy talked about very expressively and and I was thinking, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, I just kind of sank into it as a really rich exploration of character and of family and how trauma shows up in various generations in ways that are so different but yet would resonate so profoundly between everybody in that family and that's about where my insight begins and ends. I was deeply moved by the ending and it was getting pretty spiritual at the end and I'm not a very spiritual person but I just sank right into it including one Buddhist cone or maxim that I just kind of felt myself moving into my deeper deep capital S self and had a moment so Don't tell anyone, it might ruin my reputation. So those are what I finished. So all I have left to tell you is what I'm going to start. It's the end of the month, so as the calendar page turns, I have a bunch of things starting. In the last couple days, I have put out a couple videos back to back. It was a little bit much for you, the pacing of that, but I wanted to get those videos up. The Memento Moriathon is now in full swing. And I assume you saw one of the videos, either mine or Britta's, Mel's, Doris's. The first thing that I will be reading from Memento Moriathon, and if you don't know, I will link the video below, is the Muriel Spark selection, The Mandelbaum Gate. I will be starting that this weekend. It's very different. Adam said it's the only one of Muriel's that he couldn't finish. He's tried it a couple times, so I'm thinking that probably means I'm going to love it. I'm doing a video collaboration like the ones I have done in the past with Doris. Doris and I have been are doing the Faber stories. Those are short and sweet, but we've done longer video discussion series as have Natalie and I. Natalie from My Reading Life, My Reading Days. You know, I get those channels mixed up. And now I know both of those fabulous booktube women so well that I don't know if I can ever distinguish between their channels. Heidi is my reading life and Natalie is my reading days, I think. But it's now I'm just swimming in such intimacy with both of them that I, I don't think I'm. it's past the point of, of being able to remember which channel is which. The women, very distinct. The channel names, not so much. Anyway, with Natalie and Greg of Supposedly Fun, I will be doing a collaborative discussion series on Rohinton Mysteries' novel, Such a Long Journey. I read his, I don't know his publishing history, but I believe his earlier novel, A Fine Balance. It's not his earliest. Oh, this is an earlier novel. So his last novel if I have that right, is A Fine Balance, 1995. And I read it about four years ago. Absolutely loved it. It's one of the best novels ever written, I think. Certainly out of India, or about India. This is the novel before that. Such a Long Journey is 1991. So we will be putting together some discussion videos for your viewing pleasure. And this will be only the second Rohinton Mystery novel for me. He is Canadian, I saw him at Harborfront years ago before I really knew who he was. And I think at that time he was based in Regina, the poor guy in Saskatchewan. Saskatoon's pretty cool. And then there's Regina. But I don't think he lives there now. I would hope not for his sake. But anyway, if I have any subscribers from Regina, sorry. But it's been a long time since we've had a book from Rohinton Mystery. I'm not doing as much for Black History Month this year. But I am hoping to get to at least a couple, maybe more, depending on how my other reading goes. As I said a few weeks ago, I'm de-emphasizing calendar-based reading prompts in favor of just reading whatever the heck I want throughout the year and probably hitting a lot of those notes in a more spontaneous way. 
Last year for Black History Month, I was involved in a massive buddy read. I won't try to list all those people by memory. I do certainly remember that Karen of Run Right Reads and Siriella were in the group, but I can't remember who else. Doris was, but also Sonia of An Enthusiastic Reader. And she and I were deeply, deeply affected by... Oh, did I finish the sentence? The novel was The Known World by Edward P. Jones, and it was my top read last year. It just knocked me over, and it had a very similarly profound effect on Sonia. So we, just the two of us, I don't really like doing the big group buddy reads, but Sonia and I are buddy reading a collection of short stories by Edward P. Jones called Lost in the City, and I don't know where it fits in his oeuvre, whether it came before the, the known world or after. I will look all that up later, but I'm going to be diving into that. Buddy Weed, we're going to start doing a couple stories a week and maybe pick up the pace or slow the pace later. I'm so excited. And I'm not sure about the timing on this one, but it it's quite likely that this week as well, I will be starting on a video discussion type of collaboration with... Dan of the Weird Book Book Club. And we are as excited as all get out to be buddy reading and creating video discussions about a penis novel. Thanks, Eric. Eric, ta oops. Eric talked about this novella, the collection by Nina Legere, translated from the French by Laura Francis. And it's about a, I'm assuming, a heterosexual woman who is obsessed with penises, and the whole book is about said organ. And Dan and I are big fans, so stay tuned. <laughs> I said I don't know exactly when we're starting, because Dan is waiting to get a library copy, although why he wouldn't spend money on a book like this, I don't know. <laughs> and as if that all weren't enough, and again, I... Just to get it up before I did my Friday reads, I pushed myself to finish editing the Read German Books Reading Challenge video. My TBR went up just a few hours ago. To kick that off, especially once I finish the short stories by German women writers, I will be starting another book. And I haven't chosen between these, but it will either be Effie Breist by Theodore Fontaine, a 19th century German novel, or this Heinrich Boll novel, The Train Was On Time. Both of them are slim volumes, and with everything else I've got on the go, it'll be one of these, I think. The selection for Mel's Around the World Book Club really interests me, and it's on Scribd. I can't quite commit to starting it this week, but I might. So let's look that up. I can't remember what it was about or why I was interested in it. The writer is Anissa Bouzian, Born in the States, daughter of a Moroccan father and a French mother. The novel is called Dune Song. I believe it's translated from the French. Yes, translated from the French. This is uh, pretty bad, but there is no... I've just scanned the ebook. There is no reference to who the translator is, but there is reference to the fact that it was translated from the French. So, slap on the wrist for whoever made that mistake, but uh, it's about a Moroccan-American who witnesses the collapse of the World Trade Center 2001 and returns to Morocco post-September 11th. That's all I need to know. I may get that one started in the coming week as well, but it depends how much I finish before then. So yeah, aside from that one bale of the Kelly Link stories, which had been predicted by some of you. I have had a really fantastic reading week, and may it continue for me and for you. Thanks for watching.